Good morning, I'm Joe with the Cover of Marriage, and I'm here to answer your questions related to marriage and being a husband. And sometimes things that are outside of that as well. So if you got questions for me, drop them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer those questions. If I can't answer them, I'll let you know and then I'll also try to find a way to answer it as well. So, welcome to the live question and answer for the, hus the Extraordinary Husband. Um, I want to thank you all who are here, who's watching this video. So, I really appreciate y'all being here. So, let's go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. Father, thank you for your mercy, your grace, your kindness for allowing us this time in today's live Q&A for the Extraordinary Husbands. Uh, today is going to be a sensitive topic, um, maybe not in the beginning, but in the end. Help us to carefully say the words, help me to carefully say the words, give me the words that you want me to say so that they will be received in a way that will help husbands to do what you direct them to do so that they can manage their marriages, have strategies to work through the conflicts and challenges so that they can be extraordinary husbands by being intentional and not haphazard in the way that they carry out the things in their marriage. Help us all to want to be extraordinary husbands, Father. And I just thank you for what you have done and what you are going to do, Father. Open our ears and eyes and hearts so that we can see, hear, and receive what you have for us today. Help us to not reject what you have. Help us to think carefully about what's being said and take it for what it's worth and apply what we need to apply. I thank you for this. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, again, welcome to the live Q&A for The Extraordinary Husband. Um, today, we're going to be talking about a little bit more about Cherish, but we're going to be talking about it in a different way. So uh, if you see the title... Uh, you already know what we're talking about, but if you haven't, so here's what we are talking about. How can I rebuild trust and intimacy with my wife after hurting her? All right, so this is the original question that came in about this came from, uh, again, Daniel Harrell. Uh, Daniel, thank you for all the uh, questions that you have been uh, bringing to the group. If, and folks, if you have questions, please bring your questions. If you want to invite somebody to the group that you believe should be here, invite them via uh, email or via Facebook. I uh, would love to have as many husbands in this group as possible. So uh, here's the original question that... Uh, Daniel uh, asked if, if I didn't say it already, here it is. How do you get your wife to accept your cherishing her after you have hurt her in a way that it caused her to put up walls against you? And so we talked about this a little bit yesterday, but we're going to talk about it in more in depth today because I believe it's necessary for us to do that. And another thing is we need to talk about this on the other side. See, because sometimes you will have to say something to your wife that's corrective in nature, and it's going to hurt her as well and cause her to put up walls as well. And so you have to be able to manage that. You need a strategy to deal with both. You need a strategy to work through both situations. You need a strategy to work through when you have done something that's, that's caused your wife to put up walls. You need to have a strategy to work through 
the situation when you have to tell your wife something corrective in nature and she doesn't like hearing it. I mean, how many of us like hearing things that are corrective? But however, you'll see in the Bible that it's better for us to, to say these things that are corrective in nature than to hold them back. And we'll, we'll look at that. But let's go ahead and get to the first part of the question is how do I rebuild trust and intimacy with my wife after hurting her deeply? How do you get your how you get your wife to accept your cherishing her after you have hurt her in a way that's caused that 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 it caused her to to put up walls against you? And so first and foremost, you, you need to acknowledge your wrong. You need to you need to go to your wife and acknowledge your wrong. Acknowledge what you did. Uh, you you might you want to contemplate and think and meditate and say, God, how do I write a one to two sentence statement that I can deliver to my wife? to apologize for what I have done. That's the first thing you want to do. You want to do that. You want to apologize to let your wife know that you have done something wrong. Because if you don't let her know something, if you don't let her know that you did something wrong and you just act like, you know, you are okay and that nothing um, was done that was serious, and you invalidate her feelings and emotions because you don't want to deal with them. And that's the truth. You just don't want to deal with them uh, many times, but we have to deal with them because we cause the, the feelings and emotions to be there because of what we did or what we said that was not right. Okay. Now, I'm not saying that your wife will never do that yeah she she may have done you know done that and and will do that as well but i'm talking about i'm i'm talking about you what you have done so you need to make sure that you apologize and you do what you need to do see when you apologize in your marriage it sends a clear message to your wife's heart that says to her i I understand that I did something wrong and I'm going to do my best to make sure that I don't do that again because it's a possibility that you might do that again. But here's the thing. You need to make sure that you are intentional uh, about not doing that again. So that's the first thing you need to do to get your wife to accept you cherishing her again is don't apologize and then don't do the thing that you did again. Now, if you did something that's real, real awful, like you cheated on your wife, you lied to her about something that you did, or you hit her, um, these are serious offenses. And it's not going to be easy for your wife to um, take down the walls and accept you cherishing her because she's like, how in the world can you hurt me in this manner? And many times she's really looking at wanting to leave. Um, so you need to pray and ask God to help. So you need to show your wife that you have changed. You need to show your wife that you're not going to do those things again. You need to do whatever it is that you need to do. And the thing is, you cannot rush her to get better because you did that. You can't rush her in either situations. You you don't, you don't want to rush your wife, but you, you definitely want to apologize first and, and make sure you, you let her know you're not going to do those things again. So especially if you uh, commit adultery, uh, uh, cheating on her, you know, that's the, the, the biggest betrayal in any marriage that can happen. But there's other ones as well, but that's the biggest one that is most prevalent in today's society. But there's other things that can happen as well, like doing things to, you know, the kids that, you know, you came into the marriage with, um, stealing. There, there's, there's, there's a 
other things and, and uh, I'm quite sure you can think of some things and if you can think of some things put them in the comment but listen I want you to realize the damage that you caused so realize the damage that you have caused your wife and don't act like you didn't do something that's so serious you know because when people get caught they're sorry that they got caught not because they did what was wrong and because they're sorry that they got caught so now they have to pay the consequences of what they did wrong yeah there are consequences when we do something wrong and we have to face those consequences and we don't want to but we need to face them anyway so do the things you need to do to face the consequences and then ask your wife for forgiveness so a good example of how this can play out is you know we all have a credit score right we all have a financial credit score and that financial credit score what what it does is shows to people who we want to lend us money rent us homes uh, allow us to get a credit card or whatever it shows to them our credit our, our how we manage our money it's a direct representation of how we manage our money sometimes it's not 100 percent but for, for the most part it's accurate because creditors send information to the credit bureau the credit bureau saying to them that you had a late payment you didn't pay your rent you didn't pay your mortgage you defaulted on the loan um they're trying to get money that you are not willing to pay them back uh, and so forth and so on and, and that affects your credit score and you want to make sure that you have a good credit rating because you know how you take care of your money it's a de direct reflection on your character whether you know that or not it is it's a direct reflection on your character so if you're not taking care of your money, doing what you say you're going to do in that area, it, it usually ties into other areas of your life that you're not taking care of as well. So when you're not doing that, you your credit score keeps going down, 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 and down. And so to the point where you might be at a 320 or whatever, so then you come to your senses and say, you know what? I need to start doing right. I need to get my credit score back up because I'm tired of paying more money for whatever it is that I'm doing than I have to do. I'm tired of not being able to purchase a car or, or being able to rent a car or being able to get an apartment that's decent apartment that is or not having to pay like three times the amount of rent so that I can get it get a place to stay so forth and so on you want to be able to do those things and, and you want to show people that as a believer that you're doing the right thing okay so we we need to let our light shine before men so that they can glorify the god that we that we serve and and, and you having a bad credit score is a re direct representation of who you are as a Christian so people look at that and I'm not saying that everybody that has a bad credit score did something wrong sometimes you um, made mistakes and you had to file bankruptcy or whatever the situation you had financial uh, a hardship and something happened that caused you to not be able to work or whatever those situations I understand you know they, they happen and you can write a letter to the credit bureau saying to them that this is what your situation is doesn't mean that they're going to automatically give you something but they will see and understand your situation better than if you're just delinquent in all your payments and you're just sloppy and all this other stuff so so if you now realize that you have to do what you need to do um so now you start paying your bills on time you start being financially responsible and that takes time for 
that to properly reflect on your credit score. Like if you had a bankruptcy, it takes about five to seven years for it to get off of your credit score. Uh, late payments, uh, uh, where, where they had to come and send a, uh, I forget what they call it, but is when they have people trying to get money for you. They're calling you and say, hey, we need, to eat, we need you to uh, pay this amount of money. So in other, uh, in other words, this company um, calls another company to say, hey, I need you to get this money that's owed to us. So they say, okay, we'll pay you this amount of money to do it, but we're keeping the rest. So, you know, you got that on there and, and um, there's other things that you have on there. Now you want to get those things removed and it's not going to be removed that easy because you have to now build up a good track record of paying your bills on time. You have to build a good track record saying that, you know, you are going to pay money back that you're going to borrow and that you're going to be responsible with borrowing money. You're not going to borrow more money than you need to. You're not going to get yourself in a financial situation that you did before. You need to have a track record in, in, in the worst is seven years and, 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 or down. So you start paying your bills on time and, and your, your credit score starts easing back up there then you have to go and get yourself a secured credit card to because you're going to have to have some credit in order to build it so it costs you to get credit so now you have a secured credit card you got to put five hundred thousand dollars on there you got to pay on time that the interest rate is going to be real high and then after you do a, uh, you know that for a while then you'll be able to do get higher ratings but until you get your credit score back up until they remove all this other stuff off there, then you're going to have to deal with the consequences, folks. Fellas, you got to deal with the consequences. So why do we think it's different when it comes to our wives? Because we all have credit credit scores with our wives. Whether you knew that or not, you have a credit score with your wife. Your wife mentally keeps records and she doesn't she's not trying to keep, keep records but she can't help keep records if you keep doing things wrong over and over again okay you need to ask yourself what what is my credit score with my wife what is my credit score with my wife like and think about all the things that you have done that e equates to the bankruptcy late payments delinquencies and um where they had to do whatever, all, all these other things. Think of that. Think about that. When you commit adultery, when you cheat on your wife, you have bankrupt your marriage. How long does it take for bankruptcy to get off of your credit score? Seven years. But you want your wife to forgive you in seven years minutes or seven days or seven months now she might be able to, to, to forgive you it depends on the woman she might forgive you in seven minutes she might forgive you in seven days she might forgive you in several several months but sometimes it might take several years and you have to do the work in order to get it where it needs to be you have to be willing to go through the difficulties that you put yourself in so that you can your marriage can get better but the thing about it is you, you can pray and say God help my wife to forgive me to bring those walls back down help help her to do that now it's up to her whether she is going to do that but God can work on her heart but in the meantime you have to start doing things just like on the side of the, the credit report in the world, your credit report with the, your wife, you have to start doing things that rebuilds your credit with your wife. You do. You do. And then as you rebuild that, you, you, you got to ask God, God, help my wife to see the new credit score every time. Help her to see the new credit score, new credit report. And, and, and don't expect her to see it right away. 
Sometimes she will, sometimes she won't. The most times she they, they won't. And in and, and just just like you're gonna go through some turmoil on, on the side where you have a financial bankruptcy, you're gonna do the same thing when you bankrupt your marriage or in any other thing. So just equate that. Look, just just know the level of difficulty that you go through in the financial world is going to be equated to the level of difficulty you're going to have in your marriage as well. It it, it's, it doesn't change. These laws don't change. They they just go from situation to situation. They they keep going from one one area to one. These are laws that God put in place. When you do wrong, there's going to be consequences. God says, be not um, deceived. He's not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So what God is saying here, fellas, is that everything that you do wrong has a built-in consequence. Every sin that you do wrong has a built-in consequence. Whether you want to accept that fact or not, it's, that's the truth. The truth. Everything that you do wrong has a built-in consequence. So you need to do whatever you need to do to make up for what you did. And you got to keep doing it until your wife receives it. Now, if you if you know you you've done this for a while and your wife is still not receiving it, that's where you go to the credit bureau or the consumer consumer credit review who, who takes care of all the credits. And that's God. Say, so God, you know, I really need my wife to see the new credit score that I have. God might say, you know what? It's, it hasn't been long enough. You need to continue to do the work that you need to do. And you need to ask God, God, what work do I need to do in order to rebuild my credit with my wife? And do the work. Don't don't act like, you know, it's unfair and it's unreasonable and that your wife is, you know, doing you wrong because she's not accepting you like you want her to. Now, if she's doing wrong to you, then that she doesn't have a right to, to, to do anything to you that's harmful because, you know, you did that to her. Payback is not necessarily what God wants to happen. But however, uh, the thing is, you have to realize <clears throat> that God is the one who needs to go between the two of you. And sometimes your wife may not never get over this and sometimes she will, but only time will tell. Okay, I hope you got that part. So let's get to the second part. And that second part that we talked about is, we talked about what about when you have to say something to your wife uh, that is of a corrective nature because see sometimes fellas you you're gonna have to correct your wife and, and as a husband um you, that's your duty let, let me um let me read galatians 6 1 it says um brothers if anyone is caught in any trans transgression you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness okay that's that that includes your wife just because it says brothers it, it's many times the Bible speaks from the, 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 the male point of view, but women are included in this as well. Uh, in our, you know, brothers and sisters, NIV, brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. Um, so notice how it says do it gently. But it also says watch yourselves or else you might be tempted. So remember it talks about the... Jesus talked about the log and the splinter in the eye. You know, you're trying to correct somebody and you got this big old log in your eye and they only got a splinter in their eye. Make sure that you are doing what you're supposed to do before you try to correct, you know, your wife or or anybody else as well. But but when but the fact of the matter is you are need you, you're gonna need to say something about something that your wife may be doing wrong if like say for instance you know I don't know if they still have this or not but they probably do uh, and, and as a matter of fact they 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 do still have this 
you know, there's a time they used to have bootleg videos. And I don't know if anybody y'all remember bootleg videos. It wasn't that long, but bootleg videos is when people make copies, illegal copies of movies and sold them to people for cheaper. So they sell them like five uh, to ten dollars or two, three for ten or whatever. That's illegal. And as Christians, we're not supposed to do that. So if you find your wife doing something like that, then you, you need to say, hey, babe, we don't need to do that. Nowadays, what they do is they have these illegal uh, Internet sites that people put up and they charge you a certain amount to, to do that. Or they got these illegal uh, cable boxes and so forth and so on. They, the people are always doing something they, they shouldn't be doing. And if you find you, your wife or whoever's doing it, you shouldn't be doing it. Or whatever they, they might be doing it. I mean, that's just an example. That may not be the example in your household, but is an example in, in some people's households. Sometimes, you know, you, you may be doing something wrong on it, the taxes. Or your wife may be, you know, um, doing something that that that's unreasonable when it comes to disciplining the kids. Or it, it could be a, a good amount of things that's happening that God has pointed out to you. And God said in Proverbs 27, 5, he says, open rebuke is better than hidden love. You're afraid to tell your wife something that you know you need to share with her because you don't want to deal with the aftermath. You don't want to deal with her you know, shutting down on you, getting mad with you, not giving you sex. Being a extraordinary husband takes courage and we have to trust God. We can't overlook offensives. We can't overlook those things. And sometimes you're going to have to say things to your wife that she doesn't like, just like she says things to you that you don't like, but you're going to have to be a, y'all going to both have to Get over that. Sometimes you just have to let it ride out. You have to ask God, help help me. Because eventually if your wife is truly a believer and she truly loves you and she truly wants to do what's right, she's going. To, God's going to speak to her heart and eventually she's going to come around. Some, sometimes it takes longer. Just think about yourself. When, when, you, when, do, do, when you're doing things that you know you're not supposed to do, somebody comes talk to you, you get mad and you get upset. Do you, all, do you automatically change right away? Do you all automatically receive what they have to say? Think about that and, and, and think, think in the other direction about what, how your wife is doing. She's doing it no differently than the way you would do it. You probably say, well, I don't do it that way. Well, everybody's not like you. And maybe you're not telling yourself the truth too as well. But here's the thing. If you say something to your wife that's corrective in nature and she builds up walls, you know, that's part of the, 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 the marriage. And, and unfortunately, we have to just go through that. It, it may take a few hours. It may take a few days. Uh, it may take, who, who knows how long? All depends on how stubborn we are. But God tells us not to be stubborn, not to be prideful, not to let ego get in our ways. But don't be afraid to let your wife know that she has done something wrong. You, you have to be able to do that. You have to be able to do it in a loving way. Otherwise, you're going to build up resentment and bitterness and frustration towards your wife. You have to you have to be able to do that. I remember, you know, a time when my wife wanted to buy something and I knew, you know, we really didn't need to buy that. We really didn't need to spend money on that. And, and, and that happened only in a, in a, in another direction where I had I wanted to do the same thing, but the focus right now is on when when our wives are doing it. So, you know, my wife wanted to buy you know, some black curtains for an event that we were having and we had been spending way too much money and I had been, you know, giving in to her uh, buying this, that, and the other when I know I should not have, uh, where it says open rebuke is better than hidden love. 
Well, love says you don't let people do things that they don't, they're not supposed to be doing. We're supposed to, you know, expose, you know, what's going on, but we need to do it in a loving way. So I, I just said to my wife, you know, babe, we don't need to buy that. Was she happy with that decision? No, no way at all. She was not happy with that decision. But did I, did I give in because she wasn't happy? No, I didn't give in. I, I couldn't give in because the fact of the matter is, if you keep giving in, you're going to give up because y'all can't get along. And so you have to learn to deal with the waves of emotions. You got to ask God how you deal with that. You don't you, you don't get mad at her. You don't say, stop doing that. I'm tired of you or whatever. Sometimes these things might slip up. But the fact of the matter is you, you just got to keep keep loving your wife. You keep doing things and, and, and don't let her being upset cause you to change your mind. But just make sure you're doing things in a loving manner, fellas. You do. You can't you can't allow not getting sex to be the reason why you don't stand where God tells you to stand. If wrong is being done, you have to talk about it. You're the head of the household. You need to set the example. And God wants you to do it. And yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult on both ends. When you do wrong and you have to make up for it. And when your wife is doing wrong and you have to say something to her about it. And not every time that you say something to your wife about her doing something wrong is she going to get upset about it. But sometimes she will. If she doesn't, praise God. Y'all move on. You want a brother. You know, that's what um, the next verse in... Proverbs says, you say, so Proverbs 27, 5 says, better is, an, better is open rebuke than hidden love. Wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. Okay? It says, let, let the righteous man strike me. Let his rebuke be an act of loving devotion. And he said, it is oil for my head. Let me not refuse it, for my prayer is ever against the deeds of wicked, wickedness. Okay? Listen. He who rebukes a man will later find favor than one who flatters with his tongue. That's Proverbs 28.3. Whoever rebukes a person will in the end favor, will gain favor rather than one who has a flattering tongue. You know, you, you don't, you know, a, a a person who's not willing to to give corrective um, words, you, you, eventually, you know, it's going to turn against you. Um, say what you need to say and allow God to be responsible for the consequences. You got to do what God tells you to do, and you have to let God be responsible for the consequences. Too many times we're afraid of what's going to happen when we do what we know we need to do. We're afraid that our wives are not going to do this, that, or the other. You got to be courageous as a husband. As an extraordinary husband, you have to be courageous. Let me say that again. As a as an extraordinary husband, you have to be courageous. I didn't say stupid. I didn't say ignorant. I didn't say uncaring. I didn't say any of those, any other words that's related to that. I just said you have to be courageous. Courageous means you do what you need to do despite the opposition that's going to come against you. Do what you need to do despite the opposition that's going to come against you. You get that? All right, so we're going to end with that, fellas. Let's go ahead and pray out. Father, thank you for what we have talked about today. I pray that it doesn't fall on deaf ears. I pray that everybody who receives it, Father, will 
contemplate it and, and take it into consideration and say, hey, all right, this is what I need to do. All right, let's 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 get it done. Um, and help those husbands out there that are going through the difficulties because they have shared some corrective information with their wives and their wives are now, you know, uh, doing the tit for tat or she's um, now getting revenge or, or whatever it is she's doing. Help them with those situations, but also help those husbands who have done wrong to their wives. Help them to restore the peace in their household by stop doing the things that they know they shouldn't be doing. Help them to get a good track record, start building a better credit report with their wives. Give us the courage that we need to do these things, Lord. Uh, we ask you, Lord, that you put your hedge of protection over our marriages. Protect us from the enemies of our souls. That is Satan in the spiritual world that he leads, that's against you. Our carnal mind and nature that rebels against you in the world that tries to get us to conform to its standards. Help us to be more like your son, Jesus. Help us to be extraordinary husbands. Thank you for this, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, fellas, until next time, until next time, uh, which is going to be Monday, Monday at 7 a.m., Lord willing, y'all take care. Have a good rest of the day and do what God tells you. Take care. Bye-bye.